So good morning or whatever time you have. I will do one hour long online, so to speak, symposium on uh, my beliefs in how to play the instrument, which I hold in my hand. My name is Håkan Björkman. I work in the Swedish Radio Symphony since 10 years. Before that, I was 15 years at the Royal Opera in Stockholm. And previous to that, I was in a wind band for three years. Um, so, uh, yeah, I got sort of through all the, the tunnels in different, uh, different music styles when it comes to classical trombone playing. And I teach at the Royal Academy in Stockholm, or Royal College of Music, that's the correct name. This year I have a quite big class, we are 10, and uh, after Christmas we will be about 12, maybe up to 13 people, depending on, on uh, one specific, anyway, no details needed for you. How do we warm up? Do you know how to, this is my first note in the day, so this is going to be an honest warm up session. Do you know um, how the instrument sound like before you even touch the lip? Do you know how the B flat sounds? I've got no music on in the background, nothing that interferes. You pick up the horn, and in my my belief is ba that should be B flat. Ba ba yeah, close enough. And uh, often people say, let's warm up on a note that's in the middle or not so high, not too too low. So middle should be an F. F is a perfect choice, B flat is a perfect choice, either B flat goes, but what if we stress uh, to go in the middle of the slide as well, so instead of one we go to the seventh position and there we should could find maybe D, bum, 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 bum. and uh, we, we go from a D, just making a note with, with, uh, with no tongue, we just sigh. So the proper warm-up, uh, meaning that you are physically active and not, don't go straight from the bed to the instrument. Of course, I assume that you have You've been uh, walking a couple of steps or maybe go, went for a run or a walk or, I mean, you do what you do. I'm not going to uh, interfere with your habits, but let's concentrate on the middle D, shall we? And uh, with no tongue. Just imagine the sound come through the lips. or a, a combination with the R and D, which is in the English language how you say the word hard, d, d, quite soft D. And then you compare that to a T. explore a different way of pronouncing the notes and it has no meaning uh, when it comes to this is a warm-up that is good for you it just where is the time and place in, in the in the mouth and I'm not taking any responsibility for how it sounds to be honest I, I didn't like the sound of <laughs> either start maybe the air attack so to speak the air start is, is the, the one when you warm up and then slightly go upwards. With it like a 
semi slidey glissando and then you can also add some ton <laughs> structure of the of the sound a little bit more clear when you add the articulation something is ringing on in my instrument i don't know what it is I'll take this pen holder away so so that's the first two notes for me today and then i so to speak uh, swirl back and forth like a snake in the grass So my warm-up is uh, based on first having a note that's clear and quite long with just air and the next note following is with a slight attack and the next note following that one is uh, like a triplet like this don't ask me why I came up with this idea many things happen in your head when you when you uh, have your instrument. So this is a, a good little thing. Or go down. 
so on and so forth. You, you decide. Uh, next thing is I call the. Um, it's like a wave. You have something active and something deactive. You know when the the water comes in on the beach and, and then goes back again. So when it goes back, it's the same amount of water actually that just has been traveling up to on the on the sand or the hills or whatever you where you are placed. But you think of this consistent active and deactive from one direction and the other direction. That means you can play one note with a deactive air and you start a note with an active air. So that means for instance you can get a an octave leap with with a deactive airflow because you have so much energy in the first note which is active. So that means With a little help from the art of the tongue, you can do the whistling method as well. You said, you pretend that you're whistling the notes. So the result would be something like this. like uh, nothing. There's nothing left because you don't have an activity behind the air, but the note is still coming and that's a comforting feeling. And then you can actually, you can address this to, so, to any leap that you would like to achieve. For instance, and go deactive on the top because you have so much energy on the first beat.
listening to the sound too much instead of just you have to just just go the way so you reach the B flat in this case <laughs> slimmer action of, of, the, of the lips and a slimmer action of the air, a slimmer action of, uh, of anything as involved in getting a note. Demonstration going down is like you picking some, something from the floor, from the ground, you lean down, you take it from above and there it is. You don't have to dig a big hole and take it from under if, because if you take it from under you get this this kind of heard it before a little bit of a, 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 a like a what do you say hole in the ground for no reason so you come from above and you just smash the surface from above then you would think what if what if about this triangle thing then you come from above and you hit the the top of the triangle like this boop then I say, yes, 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 that's correct, but we are human beings, we know exactly what we are dealing with. So we can think that if this is the, the vision of a sound, we have a triangle, because we hit the note from above, from, sorry, from beneath, boom, 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 and then we go on the contrary, we go on the lower note, and we think of the triangle like this. So this is still the base of a triangle, and then you can, you can, if you have switch it up, you have a triangle again. That you, uh, it's all it's the imagination of um, uh, focus and uh, where to be efficient. So knowing that you have to do the least motion between two notes, that's the most efficient way to play. And not getting too narrow. If you get it too narrow from, if you want to have a G and then then a D, and you don't really reach out reach up for the D because you think too much of hitting it from under but you do have to reach the note that's important you have to reach it first compare it to having a split note like this then you reach too too widely and you're too anticipating okay uh, I have to sneak a little bit. Where am I? I'm still in the warm up mood, but this, uh, this is like a mishmash of everything. Uh, okay, so we did this uh, active and deactive. I call this uh, air that you pay for and air that you get for free. And getting the air for free is uh, when you, for instance, pretend that you play in the same octaves. <laughs> pretend that the high octave that you go to is just staying the same. <laughs> Embarrassing to make a presentation and then miss the note, but I'm not a human being. But anyway, so this is the thing. The trick is to do as little as you can in order to get the notes. The more things you involve, uh, the more complicated and you make it harder for yourself than, than it needs to be to make any note come. So take stress away from eyebrows, stress away from cheek and uh, chin, and stress away from extremely, very important, the posture of the body, shoulders, uh, stress away from how you hold the instrument, is it tight, is the grip tight, is the grip loose, can you involve less movement of just one joint, can you involve, maybe make it easier with just going with the wrist as well, sometimes. To make this... Sixteen, I took a lesson from Frank Christopher in Chicago Symphony, 
Yeah, there are actually a couple of lessons. But he's told me the slower you can move the slide from one position to another, the better it is. The only thing that matters is that you have to be there in time. Because this is quite important. No one cares what you are doing and dealing with between the notes. If you're going for F to G in the middle register for trombone player, say maybe this is one of the hardest um, legato playing you can make. F G F G F G, and you need to go one four one four because I tell you to do. Uh, if you go very steep. <laughs> a little bit and try to be later than you think that, that you can. So <clears throat> this uh, breaking action that you need to anticipate <clears throat> with, with the whole thing of having one joint involved is taking taking off the, the bars a little bit when you use this this uh, the second joint which is the the wrist as a little uh, like a suspension so then one tip for you to, for me to you is uh, to practice this in an extreme i'm going to take a sip of water because i'm speaking too much uninteresting things one important uh or important one one good thing is to uh, make it the hardest way possible is to make one to seven and back to one again so for instance that means b flat b natural and b flat and try to do it first as quick as you can there is a bit of a tension it bounces a little bit when you go to one and seven and one so now you relax a little bit and do it slow, more slowly but still place the notes as close as they can actually but we are not interested or a, a viewer or listener is not interested to to see a super quick tense tensed arm to do this heavy duty work one to say it's a quite long way it's like 74 and a half centimeters or something <laughs> things. 
This is what I was mistaken. Sorry for this. <laughs> this is what I mean. B to F instead of including the B third. stand as, as a normal uh, western people I mean we, we sit all the time so when when we do stand up we are quite proud and we stand with a straight back and straight knees and instrumental up and we want to, we want to be there instead if you loose, loosen a little bit and take away I don't know if you, if you can see me I have got Dark trousers as well, but instead of having like a tension, you relax a little bit in your knees, just a tiny bit. If I stand over here, see if I can, I can move this a little bit. Uh, sorry. Mm. Yeah. If you have over here, maybe. See? Now you can see against the whites background. Stiff, relaxed. Stiff, relaxed. Stiff. Relax. It's not a big difference. You don't have to stand like this, of course, because it looks yes, super silly. But this is the way. The, the, the wind. If you if you lock the knees, you will lock the hip, and then if you lock the hip, you will not be able to move around. So so to speak, you don't have to move around so much when you play. But the body needs to be open and free. And this is your resonating box. So instead of having a tensed and straight posture like this. You can have a relaxed and, and, and uh, still with a proud posture. You don't have to change so much, but the thing is going from this to, to this. And sink down a little bit so the tension is going away. Take, the, take up the instrument. Don't do this. Stay down instead of this. So I will see if I can demonstrate the sound difference between being tensed and playing. I'm trying to get a good sound now. Again. Now I will relax. Loosen up a little bit. Then take the lock away from the knees, relax. 
relaxed out a little bit, be a little more loose in the hips, and the whole body should be relaxed and the, the whole resonation, resonation should actually benefit from this. I don't know how it is for you guys. For me, it sounds like the instrument is getting a bit lower in pitch and harmony. And I get a, a sort of, uh, it sounds like I have a bigger mouthpiece and a bigger instrument all of a sudden. So I'll do it again, yes, for a quick demonstration. One. So we need to adjust a little bit. We have to be, we have to be relaxed in the throat in order to get a nice uh, exhalation and inhalation of the air, and giving a, a good, quite proper pipe for the for the sound to to uh, develop in the body. Which is actually not. This is not fake news. <laughs> this is actually happening. The body itself it's a resonating resonating box. So you can explore it back and forth with this. Often I forget about this all the time. <laughs> I stand uh, as I was trying to explain, but I forget about this. But it makes, it makes sense. Now, uh, let's talk about legato. 
Legatos can be uh, formed in different ways. My belief is uh, the air support should be constant, but it should be having the difference between activation and deactivation. And the deactivation of the constant airflow is easy to misunderstand and misinterpret. Because if I say deactivation, it doesn't mean that, whoop, that you should keep the air uh, behind. It should still be moving, but very slowly and very thin when you do the slide, slide change. But not all the time, in not all the registers, but in the range that we we can reveal some some bluntness and some you know when, when we have this slide slash uh, natural slur slash going against the partials slash glissando risks slash going uh, uh, pa pass uh, uh, partial. <laughs> Is, uh, there is a risk that we, if we push there, we get the free the free notes that we are not invited to the party. Because we are pushing there even in between. Going through the partials, uh, beginning of Morsel Symphonics. That's a classical example. We are a little bit too, too afraid of the high notes, so we, what we need to do is say It's like uh, playing the shines, ding, ding, we, we uh, hit, hit the shine with a, with a button or a club or a hammer or whatever you say and then uh, it rings on its, on its own, it's like us, we, it rings on its own with, a, with the air we just put in then you can relax. We don't have to enforce. I think of making of producing of a sound in an instrument on the trombone, or brass instrument actually, is like uh, having three strings on a, in a piano. If you if I open this piano, which I'm not because there's so many things on it. There are three th strings from, I think, from, not this, some, some are from this octave, you can see three strings in every, uh, every note. One string, upper lip, to the second string, lower lip, third string, air. That's the three elements we need to vibrate. These, these are all vo vocal chords, instead of having a inside and invisible we can all see them so we need two pair of lips one pair of lips one pair is two lips and we need air otherwise the perfect apertura doesn't speak if you don't pull push some air through it so that's the first rule and then when you have so to speak compared it to a piano of the chimes or the boom on the timpani or the guitar string ding which is only one string but still we have the example of making it like a, a unit of three uh, then you don't have to enforce it and come on guitar sound more where is the volume button uh, the piano come on I want more then we can with the air make a crescendo and, and, and increase the volume Sometimes we don't want it. We just want the lines of the music to take care of that itself. So the next note is is uh, yes, is important as if you would play it on the piano. Bam, bam. You make a little more emphasis on the emphasis on the second one, or you can do less em emphasis. of air you travel as quick as you, as you can as relaxed as you can you don't have to be in time on, on the G flat before someone say so and that's you <laughs> and uh, that's also gives me 
uh, tip. Play as slowly as you can in the given tempo all the time. I'm just jumping back and forth now because it's like a, a lesson with no... I can't see you. <laughs> if you play... Uh, bam, pa 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 bam, pa 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 and so on. Sixty notes. Pa 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 pa. Play them as slowly as you can in the given tempo, so you don't think that the direction is equal stressing. Direction is one thing. That's the long horizontal line you need. Now we speak about music, but this, well, dealing with the trombone is often music, or actually, it's music all the time, <laughs> even in the first warm-up note. Uh, what we need is direction, yes, horizontal direction, yes, but be cool and be on time when you need to be in time, not before, so don't stress it. Going back to the legato. Okay, that was uh, the example B flat to G flat. Now there is an example doing. Um, let's play a. If you, if you play, play that, it's called the blue bells of Copa. <laughs> There are certain spots when you need the air to be more, more active and there are several spots where the air needs to be not too active at all. Then, then in an obvious reason it's just, just going back to what, what I said like 20 minutes ago with the, with the, activate, the active air and the deactive. sneaks away and we are not so interested in what happened because you know what would you would like to happen you want to have the notes if you but if you anticipate too much I, mean, I didn't make that up I was pushing there and um, the result is not my cup of tea if you push it too much so the air is hard to decide where am I, which is, who are the notes that I, I want, I'm supposed to be, be on with, with myself. This is the air speaking. <laughs> Mr. Air, welcome to the trombone world, but not too often and not too much. So... <laughs> If you exaggerate this one, where this it's like a train going to another song that you know of. It's called the Fernand David Trombone Concerto. You know, they have the Dolce place in the beginning. Quite often people play because they are so uh, careful, careful about getting the notes perfect every time. All the notes should be where it should be. And it means that they have active activity behind every single note, which is a little bit over the top and a little bit too much of activity. So what you can do is, is to pick and choose where, where are the highlights. 
too much of deactive, deactive, but that's not true either. So a combination, combination between uh, activity and awareness of deactivity. And if you, if you, yeah, if you do the extremes, this is the result. Um, and be careful about there. It's a risk of having a. Click, 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 the, you hear the partials. It's like the beginning of the uh, second movement for uh, Grandol. If you hear this section. I mean, I don't believe that you play this boring, but I. Uh, the actual movement between the two notes, those are the ones I'm highlighting right now. And it's the only thing of this topic uh, after 46 minutes or something. Um, so we have to be aware of... Santa Claus is saying ho ho ho, uh, the air is doing the same thing, ho 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 ho, because this is a long phrase, long line, so every note is living a longer time in the room, so they need a little bit more attention and a little bit more awareness that they exist. So if you just think of, like in the David example, just one direction note, then you will end up Too shy, and there is no direction, and uh, it, like by one second into that play, you lose the interest from the listeners because they are not so. Uh, they stop, pick up their phones, and look at the, the browser and, or uh, whatever they look at uh, for a think of something else because you have to grab the attention of having a direction all the time. That's one thing. Another thing, and uh, then we talked about. Um, one of my, I think we discussed that uh, a couple of minutes ago, is this. If you have a F, G, F, which is the horn, or F, E, F sharp. If you hear way, go up from above and come from beneath and above, uh, try to hide those. Pretend as if you were just playing with a with plug. And then add to that, uh, taking away the air so we don't hear the plug being activated. That goes as, as specifically with the trombones with, with the normal plug, which you have this clicking sound. More than these, these models that open. I mean, so many open models nowadays. So I'm not talking in favor of any instrument, but still. Uh, that's one example. And uh, high register. Is there a secret how to play high register? Yes, there is. And I've got 10 minutes. I will um, spend those minutes with the most important thing. If you have watched my Facebook, sorry, my YouTube thing, uh, which I think is just a, a silly little thing. I often sit in this, on this very chair and play stupid things because I, I like to have a little goal like a carrot you know, on the stick that I want to achieve. I want to play something through without stopping, without... Sometimes you stop 
even if there's a camera. <laughs> um, but it's a, yes, a good, good little thing to have being your own student for a while and playing for, for the teacher. And the teacher in this case is the, the camera. Let's see if, if you can stay with the focus. Anyway, secret of high range and the perfect set of the amateur. Part one. How many of you know that there is one note on the trombone uh, deep, deep down that's actually not a B flat on the first position? B, B in natural, deep down on the piano. Let's uh, be B in natural. Maybe it doesn't come out in, in, from, from this. Uh, device, I don't know, but that's the B natural, and it should be two octaves below that. First position. Don't even try to get a B flat. A super low, super duper, mega pedal B flat, because, because it doesn't exist on the first position. You do have the B natural. It's good enough. And then you take every two notes away in the harmonic series. So let's go to a harmonic series. Take the trombone here, here's the trombone. Oh, welcome to the world, the trombone. And you say the B flat trombone is welcome to play, okay? Octave. Fifth. Octave again. The third. So we take away every second note, which is oh, strange. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we get the octave. No, you don't get the octave, you get the the fifth, and then you don't get the octave again, and you get the third. Hmm. Does this imply on that super low B? Yes, it does. This is the one, then you skip the B, natural, you go directly to the F sharp. This is the first position, F sharp, and you can try to mock yourself. Play the F sharp on the fifth. No plug involved. So what you do now, I'm gonna get a little bit closer, Corona safe. You get the, the corners down a little bit, and you get the lower dip a bit into the mouthpiece and a bit falling down slightly. If I say this and this, it's way too much. But the sensation is that you widen your aperture. Aperture is the opening between lips over and under lip. This will give you the higher range octave. Uh, the higher high range aperture, sorry. And uh, you can go in octaves, uh, that's what I mean. And you play, so to so speak, in the same octave as you, you feel comfortable, but then you add some thinking of high notes, and you don't help out so much with amateur. You just play the whistling method and getting the, the support from the body from, from, the, from the early start, that is uh, from, from the hip area and up. And uh, together with the S, S whistling sound, in, in, it's not whistling in the, in the bell, but in the setup with this new amateur. Old new amateur. It's the same amateur that you have, but it's just slightly, slightly more um, aware. Okay, let's go back to the low B. And then there's no B again, but there's a D sharp. It sounds quite hollow, hollow and spooky, but still you can have it, you can find it on the first position. If you don't find it, no griefs. Uh, the important note on, on this little uh, history lesson is, uh, is the F sharp to concentrate on. I will continue, and then you will get a septile. This A flat, uh, but in the a, in the B family, that should be an A then. Uh. And then the A. Ah, uh, sorry. Oh, the higher you go, the the more difficult. It 
comes and uh, then you stop this is end of the history lesson in the b in the b family uh, so to speak the fake notes thing concentrate on f sharp you make self yourself uh, i'll take your lesson for uh, tomorrow you do this not more than two three minutes so you do this <laughs> stay where the A sharp is. If you call it F sharp, C sharp, A sharp. And in order to get a, as clear sound as possible, you need to do this adjustment of the lips to get a bit more wider and more open. Then you continue down the line. F. The more you can open up the sound on the second position on natural F with a no plug, just the lip, the better it is. If you get like a fussy sound, an airy sound, like this in the beginning, absolutely fine. The thing is that you know that it is actually is on that position, that's the most important. By Over time you will develop a, a, greater, a greater power on that one when it comes to sound. And continue down the lane, E. Stay with the D sharp is E flat. Stay. D. Stay. E flat. Stay. So no adjust adjustment. C. Seven, but not exceedingly low. Okay, that was the seventh position. Now we would need number eight, and there is an eighth position. If you do okay, equivalent to C uh, to the seven, that's the two and a half and a plug, and then you take the next position, which is eight in the F trombone, and that should be like a very, very high fourth position. And uh, there, is the, there is the B natural. From, from B natural, F sharp, D sharp with the plug now. Oh, sorry. And then you dip down. to this two and a half where you just took uh, the B natural if you if you are normal uh, trombone user and then you can find the low C <coughs> on that position I need some more maybe this will be longer than one hour okay now I will we'll plan to take a low C Sometimes you end up with just taking one note like a C and not enough space between the stands and, and the, the chairs. So, so you can. Okay, I did it. No one really paid notice of that note, but it's still there. Now, now over to the, the beneficial part of this. Okay, not only do you get a super, super open uh, low register, if you do this training. <laughs> Play the play it with a uh, fake note like this. I call it fake note, and then you stay in the sample, same position. You you pull this, the trigger in. <laughs> then you can have a super open uh, slap note um, 
Bonanza. <laughs> and really play it. And so to speak, the way to hit the note feels extremely easy all of a sudden because you open up the, the your aperture up. And also the intonation is not adjust you don't have to adjust so much with super low, extremely low and uh, and plus and minus, you just remember normal 4, normal 5, normal 6, normal 7, and then the fake B flat, which is a, a B natural, which is on the so to speak high 4 where the E, e flat should be. Talking about the E flats. If you compare it to, to the middle B with no plug and then it with a plug. Then you know, oh, it's quite low. You remember what you said in the beginning. You go from above when you take deep note, deeper note, lower note. So you don't over, don't pass the limit where, where the note is, is uh, situated. So that means you can go on quite low slides positions, but you hit the note from above. So the thing is that the thing is that will happen that you will take it on the sweet spot and just whoa it will open up and uh, no worries about the adjustments and no worries about the tuning machine or the tune with the colleagues or the two bus or the double basses it will be fine. So <clears throat> that's easy. Now Past the time by two minutes and twenty seconds already, but I would li like to just give you the last tip of advice: using the same amateur, but go super high instead. What you need is a relaxed uh, attitude to it. So is this even possible to play high notes on a low setup amateur? Mm, I'm skeptical, very skeptical. But then you try. And you will see that it actually works, but it feels strange in the beginning. It feels like playing a high note on a low B flat amateur, for instance. Uh, it's too big. It's too big. Yes, but if you do something else instead, instead of but closing, if you close your lips, that will not not help you at all. It will get squeezy and too sharp, but stay as open as you as you dare. Maybe not super open like this. I mean, it works. It, it really works, but it's maybe the first choice. So slightly more narrow, but super more, more open than, than you would ever dream of. That's closed. Quite spiky and mm, narrow sound. You can go up to a high F. I'm not kidding with this posture of playing from the low B flat, or it, even better. Dare to try. Stay, stay, stay. Adjust with the air of the tongue, the arch of the tongue. I'm saying so many, many, many wrong words. Huh? But anyway, I'll correct myself. <laughs> uh, stay with the lips post lip posture, the arch of the tongue, which is creating the, the whistling. If you whistle, you can't see the difference. But the tongue is going like this in the mouth. You're doing the same. is possible so it's it's actually working stay that was not the most beautiful sound.
on. But it, the the thing is, I just wanted to to get through this uh, channel and say, try this. Not too many minutes a day, three to five minutes, to make the fake notes happening in the beginning. Then you just explore with the size, and then you can play normal trombone. <laughs> Too wide, close it, but don't close it as much as, as you would as if you would go normal. Like this. Watch. Okay, stay. And all, you will you will find out that more and more the sound will get bigger and the surface of the note will get easier to hit because it's it will be like an open goal, you know, it's not no goalkeeper. You just kick the ball into into the net, and there's it's no no worries. So guys, uh, I hope you will find anything of this interesting, and uh, if you would like to try it, be my guest. And uh, if you forget all about this in uh, 16 seconds when you when you push the end button. That's up to you. I'm just giving you my tips and advice. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great online symposium uh, wherever you do and uh, practice with... Uh, <laughs> not with a smile. <laughs> Actually, this is the last thing. It's not so important to, to just think of the corners getting down and down. Those are the winners in the game. But it's just it's equally important to involve all the muscles in, in the amateur. So it stretches up stretches to the side, but it definitely stretches downwards, as we were talking about this, getting the, the low note to ring. But if you get too sloppy here, it will just be too open, and then you will find this extremely un, unhelpful. Like this. So it needs to stretch up and stretch to the sides. to actually be being able to uh, play something articul articulated on the F, f fake F sharp fake model thing on the first dum, bum, bum, bum. see if it works okay um, with those words I thank you for watching and uh, uh, thank you for uh, having the interest in the instrument bye